Hey guys, it's Levi and Anthony from the Rag Company, and we're here to talk about Pearl Auto Shampoo from PNS. It's part of the yep. Rennie Doyle Double Black Collection. Yep. It's a really good soap, but we get a lot of questions from folks asking, how can a, I use it? A lot of questions, yeah. So we wanted to take this time, wash Dane's car finally, because we yeah. haven't done it in a long time. Sorry, Dane. And we thought, why not show you the different ways that you can utilize it. Yeah, yeah, so everything from rinseless to putting it in the IK foamers, uh, two bucket method, everything like that, just because we get a lot of questions on what's the dilution ratio for rinseless? How do I go about a rinseless wash How with I Put Pearl? it in the IK multi, or the foamer. Yeah, what's the dilution ratios for that? We get a lot of questions on that, and we're hoping this video answers it, but also to show you guys that it is a pH balanced shampoo that is quite easy to use and is very yeah. versatile. And we'll make this car clean. So we're gonna start with rinseless first and then get to the other methods after that. All right, guys, so we're ready to begin our <laughs> rinseless wash. So I have a few things in front of me. I have a bucket full of water with pearl diluted at 256 to one. So it's half an ounce per gallon. I also have an IK multi sprayer with that same dilution in it for our pre-spray. I also have some bead maker here because no detail is complete without bead maker. I have a fresh chenille mitt that we're going to put into our pearl solution, let that soak. And then I have my double twistress drying towel. So we're gonna be doing this rinseless wash here on this uh, front uh, fender here, showing you guys what the proper way to do it is and, and how I'm going to do it. But real quick, before I begin, I do wanna talk about this because when it comes to doing rinseless wash with a pearl, you want to make sure you're doing this on a protected vehicle. At the end of the day, we are still using soap to do this rinseless method, right? So this is completely different than using a polymer product to clean. So polymers have that self-cleaning ability to pull and encapsulate dirt, whereas soap is gonna provide more lubrication, if anything. So really what it comes down to is having enough lubrication and a nice wash media and also a nice drying towel to lift and pull away any dirt or dust or anything like that. Now, the reason why you'd wanna have a protected vehicle is because if this was unprotected, again, we are using soap. We wanna avoid soap staining, especially if we were in direct sunlight or anything like that. Having this being waxed and sealed, we know that it is protected. This is also be absolutely safe on a coated car as well. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and begin. We have our IK Multi Sprayer, like I said, 256 to one with Pearl in it. And in the Multi, this will not foam. There's no foam gonna come out of this. It's gonna be just a pure liquid. So we're just gonna spray down from top we'll to bottom. out of the way. best to not do this in direct sunlight either. That's why we're in the shade. Yep. So as you can see, it's not foaming. You might see a sud or two, but you can actually begin to see that product pulling down any type of dirt. So it is going to lift it to a certain extent and start to drag it down just like any pre-rinse would normally do. So if the, if the, if the panel is extremely dirty, you can pre-rinse it a couple times if you want to do it like you that. You can use but a pressure washer or a hose and wash the car off. Yeah, you and can then do, do your rinseless that way. Totally. At that point though, you'd probably just do a normal yeah, I mean, soap and water wash. Makes sense. So anyways, all right, grabbing our chenille mitt here, I am going to wring it out. Now, as you can see, this is also not super soapy. This water, to know you got the right dilution, it should look kind of like lemon water, right? So not too yellow, not too clear. It should be kind of right in the middle and there shouldn't be a whole lot of suds appearing. So it's a rinseless wash solution. So we got that on the mitt and we are going to wipe in straight lines, flip the mitt as necessary, go back. And then I do have a grit guard in here. So we'll go back through, rinse that out, wring it out and finish off this panel. Now what's nice is that when I was talking about lubrication before, you're going to notice that this is a lot slicker than normal water, of course, and it is slicker than a polymer product. So that's one difference that you'll notice right off the bat. It is a lot slicker, there's a lot, a lot more lubrication. So at this point in time, I could dry the vehicle. I could just go straight to drying and call it good. But what I'm gonna do is add bead maker on top of it and use bead maker as my drying aid to also help seal it in one step. So, Apply it pretty liberally since this hasn't had some bead maker in a while. Let that sit. Grab our double twisters drying towel, prime the towel with a couple sprays of bead maker on here, and then dry everything into that panel. And that is nice and smooth. It's also super, super slippery. Oh, it's very slick, yeah. The second you put bead maker on here, it is very, very slick. 
It's also nice to use bead maker because, for example, if you were to have gotten that dilution wrong on the soap and it was a little bit too soapy, that bead maker is a good follow-up to kind of help dilute that and remove any of the extra soap residue from the surface. But yeah, Levi, you want to go ahead and take a oh, feel? Yeah, dude. No. The that biggest is... <laughs> thing, the biggest thing, the reason we're doing this Super is, like slick. we said, on a protected vehicle, so something that has a ceramic coating on it, or maybe you have a vinyl wrap, something like that. This works really well to be able to give it a good clean when you don't want to have to bust out, uh, you know, do two buckets. You don't want to have to pull out the hose. You don't want to have to do that. Um, you can use Pearl in this setting. Now, yeah. if you're going to be using this in your detail shop or you're going to be using this as a, uh, as a true auto soap, we recommend you use it as a soap. Yeah. So we recommend doing the two bucket method. We recommend adding it to a foamer uh, to foam it on and actually utilize it what it's for because it is a soap. But yeah. in this situation on a clean car, just to get it a nice quick wash, maybe you're going to a car show or something, this is the way to do it, yeah. faster. Way faster. So cool. Yeah, All right, nice. so we've knocked out the rinse list. We'll have uh, Jimmy grab a couple shots of this so you can see that it does look good. Uh, and then following that, I said we bust out the foamers, get this thing foamed up, do an old fashioned two bucket wash. Mm -hmm. All right, hey guys, really quick. So for the foaming process, I did wanna briefly go over the dilutions for the IK 1.5 and the IK 9 and show you the differences on how much coverage you can get between the two different models of the foamers. So here in my hand is the IK 1.5 diluted at 34 to one with Pearl Auto Shampoo, meaning I have 34 ounces of water in here to just one ounce of Pearl Auto Shampoo. So you don't wanna overdo it. Pearl is very uh, thin and has lots of lubrication to it, but you don't need a whole lot. It is still very concentrated. So I'm gonna show you on this door panel here what kind of coverage you can get with just the 1.5. Here we go, and here we go. So I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, wow, that was a lot more coverage than the soap I've been using at home in my IK 1.5, and that is because Pearl is a lot thinner than your normal gel soap. It is very uh, liquidy, as some would say, and so a little goes a long way, and with it being so liquid, it helps dilute, helps mix inside the water uh, a lot easier, right? So you're not having to stir it, you're not having to worry about any of that gel clumping up. Pearl basically sucks straight up into this thing and performs beautifully. So that was plenty of foam for a pre-spray. Some people will say, that's not enough foam. I want more foam than that. Well, fortunately, we have the IK9 where I'm gonna knock out the rest of this door and quarter panel. All right, so we got this thing pumped up pretty much to the max there. So this is gonna produce some pretty good foam. I'm gonna lay it on pretty thick. The dilution in here is four ounces to the five liters of water, which would still be equivalent to the 34 to one that I would have in the 1.5. So same exact dilution. Still on the same pump session. I'm not gonna pump it up anymore. So there we go. So I was able to knock out the door and that rear quarter there uh, with ease. And that came on a lot thicker than the first soak we did with the 1.5. So that was just a quick little segment here on the dilutions for the, uh, the IK foamers, because I know a lot of people have questions on that, but I personally love the pearl inside these foamers. I think it works fantastic. I think it's a really, really easy product to use. So we're gonna rinse this car off next, re-foam it, and then go for a proper two bucket method. So as you can see, this hose is still not fixed. I don't know why it's leaking. We gotta rinse the soap off. So we'll rinse it and then we'll actually do maybe a proper uh, two bucket method wash. Okay. 
We're spraying foam on this wet car so we can actually start to have a little extra lubrication on the surface before we actually do a two bucket wash. Which means we have pearl in one bucket and regular water in another. All right, everyone, so we just finished up with the wash. We didn't talk a lot during the two bucket method because it's pretty straightforward and there's plenty of videos on YouTube talking about the two bucket method and showing how it's done. We also have a few wash Wednesdays doing that method, so if you haven't seen those, make sure to check those out. Levi just got done rinsing off the car yep. and we're ready to dry this thing. Well, now we're ready to dry it, but first we need to add a, uh, like a dry aid. Yeah. Because what most people don't understand is once you've washed the soap off the vehicle, you have now washed all your lubrication off the vehicle. And that is where most people scratch their car. Yeah. Two bucket method is great to limit scratches, but you're just gonna be putting scratches back in it if you're not going to use some form of lubrication. Yep. Which is what we've got here in the form of bead maker. Yeah, it's a big surprise. It's Everybody, everybody's probably thinking, oh wow, we're using bead maker. <laughs> yeah, we're using bead maker. So we're just gonna spray this on pretty liberally, grab a couple of our drying towels, dry this thing in, and as far as the wheels go, letting Dane clean the wheels. We've cleaned his wheels enough times. So let's yeah, go I'm ahead done. And, I'm uh, done doing wheels. You're going twistress? Double twistress. All right, I'm going twist and shout. You want me to a couple spritzes there? Get you prepped, prepped, primed, ready primed. to go. Primed. All right, I'm ready to go too, so. Well, we got the uh, Volvo wash, so yeah. now Dane can come finish his wheels because we're not doing them. Sorry, Dane. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Not gonna happen. So guys, that's how we use Pearl as a rinseless wash, as well as putting in the IK foamers and then doing a simple two bucket method wash. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Super easy, super yeah. slippery. It's a nice soap. So I think it's uh, well worth adding to your arsenal. Yep. And uh, I think making it part of your daily or weekly routine, wash yeah. routine on a Saturday, uh, because it's so versatile. Yeah. Versatile, has a nice lemon scent to it. I think a lot of you guys will like. But overall, just another great addition to the PNS lineup, and we love topping it with Bead Maker. So, hopefully, this was helpful, guys. If you guys like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more detailing content in the future, and stay tuned for more videos right here at the Rag Company. See ya.